hello beautiful people welcome back to my channel once again with another new topic so today we are going to discuss regarding the biochemistry mcqs practice mcqs part 2 so hope you are liking my previous videos so please like share and subscribe to my channel if you are new to my channel keep supporting me next let's move on to our today's video so friends today our 16th question is polyuria polydipsia weight loss hyperglycemia and glycosuria are often associated with option a hyperadrenalism option b hyperpituitarism option c diabetes mellitus and option d hyperthyroidism so here uh, he is asking about the different kinds of symptoms which are related to which disease so the right answer is option c diabetes mellitus we can see all these kind of symptoms that as polyuria that is frequently you are getting the urine polydyspia weight loss and hyperglycemia these are all the con conditions which are also uh, associated with diabetes mellitus okay friends so moving on to our 17th question glycosylated hemoglobin tells us about the glucose control of a person for the past days of so here he is asking about the glycosylated hemoglobin glycosylated hemoglobin is nothing but our daily routine test that is hb a1c test so it can be estimated for how many days in between how many days option a 30 days option b 60 days option c 120 days and option d 200 days so the right answer is option c 120 days hemoglobin uh, glycosylated hemoglobin tells about the glucose okay friends next moving on to our 18th question what is the normal ghb level option a 1 to 2 percent option b 3 to 5 percent option c 4.5 to 8 percent and option d 9 to 12 percent so here ghb level is nothing but glycosylated hb level so the right answer is answer c that is 4 to 5 uh, 4.5 to 8 percent is the right answer next moving on to our 19th question what does first t in gtt stands for option a test option b tolerance option c time and option d turbulence so the full form of gtt we have to know that is glucose tolerance test so the right answer the first t in the gtt stands for that is option b tolerance next moving on to our 20th question during ogtt what is not allowed first you have to know the full form of ogtt that is oral glucose tolerance that you all know so which is what is not allowed so we have to follow some uh, protocol criteria to get an accurate result for this test right so what is not allowed in this during this test period option a food can be taken during the test period alcohol can be consumed in the previous evening smoking is allowed in the du allowed during the test option d all of the above so options d all of the above these are all not allowed in the ogtt procedure okay friends next moving on to our 21st question cerebrospinal fluid for glucose assay should be option a refrigerated option b analyzed immediately option c heated to 56 degrees centigrade and option d stored at room temperature after centrifugation first so here first you have you have you all have to know that we should never refresh the csf that is cerebrospinal fluid so what is the next option we have to do is we have to immediately we have to analyze it immediately so the right answer for this is option b analyzed immediately moving on to our 22nd question pregnant woman with symptoms of thirst frequent urination or unexplained weight loss should have which of the following test performed option a tolbutamide test option b lactose tolerant test option c epinephrine tolerance test and option d glucose tolerant test so a pregnant woman with these symptoms what kind of test she should undergo so the right answer for this is option d glucose tolerance test that is gtt just now we have discussed regarding the gtt right moving on to our 23rd question in fasting state the arterial and capillary blood glucose concentration varies from the venous glu glucose concentration by approximately how many mg per dl okay so you have to know that arterial and capillary blood they both are different right so what you are asking 
if they vary the venous glucose concentration by approximately how many mg per dl they, they may be vary from venous and capillary blood blood glucose concentration option a 1 mg per dl option b 5 mg per dl option c 10 mg per dl option d 15 mg per dl so the right answer is option b 5 mg per dl moving on to our 24th question the conversion of glucose or other hexose into lactate or pyruvate is called as option a glycogenesis option b glycogenolysis option c gluconeogenesis and option d glycolysis so the right answer is answer d glycolysis that is breakdown of glucose okay friends moving on to our 25th question the glycated hemoglobin value represents the integrated values of glucose concentration during preceding option a 1 to 3 weeks option b 4 to 5 weeks option c 6 to 8 weeks and option d 16 to 20 weeks answer is answer c 6 to 8 weeks is the right answer so friends here you should know that this is a simple question but he has been made it very complicated with the different type of question asking pattern like uh, he has asked in this question okay friends moving on moving to our 26th question total glycosylated hemoglobin levels in a hemolyzed reflect what option a average blood glucose levels of the past two to three months option b average blood glucose level for the past weeks option c blood glucose level at the time of the sample is drawn option d hemoglobin a1 levels at the time of the sample drawn so the right answer is average blood glucose level at the past two to three months so next moving on to our 27th question a patient with hemolytic anemia will option a show a decrease in glycated hb value option b show an increase in glycated hgb value option c show little or no change in glycated hb value and option d demonstrate an elevated hb a1 value so the right answer is option a show a decrease in the glycated hb value moving on to our 28th question an increase in serum acetone is indicative of a defect in the metabolism of what option a carbohydrates option b fat option c urea nitrogen and option d uric acid so the right answer is option a carbohydrate they may show that the serum acetone is an indicative of a defect in the metabolism of carbohydrates okay moving on to our 29th question a blood sample were collected at the beginning of an exercise class and after 30 minutes of aerobic activity which of the following would be most consistent with the post exercise sample option a normal lactic acid low pyruvate option b low lactic acid elevated pyruvate option c elevated lactic acid low pyruvate and option d elevated lactic acid and elevated pyruvate so the right answer is answer d that is elevated lactic acid and elevated pyruvate moving on to our 38th question what is the best method to diagnose lactase deficiency option a h2 breath test option b plasma aldolase level option c ldh level and option d d xylose test so the right answer is option a h2 breath test is the best method to diagnose lactate deficiency so friends these are your biochemistry part 2 practice mcqs hope you like it please like do like share and subscribe to my channel keep supporting me we'll see you soon in our part 3 of biochemistry mcqs thank you